Hey all, so a really fun one this time. I got to bring She-Hulk. And Toad. <laughs> like, those are both characters that I never get to bring and really enjoy playing, so this one was a blast. So I did have someone else place guidance on this spider ham for me so that I didn't have to worry about getting backed up and then probably wrecked, let's be honest, if I wasn't able to parry stun. You can do this fight without it, but it's definitely easier with it. Either way, as usual, because we're not going to be able to keep the slow up, we just need to make sure that we're spamming the special one basically as soon as we get it so that his spider nonsense does not build up and we don't have to worry about the evade. We don't have to worry about hitting him while he's stunned because my She-Hulk is duped. You saw right there the Porker Popper triggered, but then it was immediately purified. And so basically, as long as you are not hitting into him right as he's stunned and immediately comboing that into a special one, you don't really have to worry about taking power sting damage, making She-Hulk a very, very good counter to him, even without the slow. Now, these power stings are also doing damage because all they care about is that debuffs were applied, not that they're still there, and so that's why we're getting these extra triggers. They're not doing a ton of damage because Spider-Ham is small, and so we're not keeping up a lot of Furies, but we are absolutely doing enough. The Fury from Ebb and Flow knockdown was really helping out our power stings there. So very, very good fight for She-Hulk. That one was an absolute blast. Then we have the only fight that I brought Toad for. I also could have brought Penny Parker, and honestly, it probably would have been a little cleaner, but I sent a Toad here when my friend Metaphors was still in my battle group several seasons ago, and it went really well, so I was like, well, I gotta try that, because that looked awesome. And basically, the reason that this works is that if you get a significant number of those paralytic poison debuffs on Nick as his first life expires, then he will shrug all of them. But he will not shrug the passives that they turn into because he's a skill champion. And then because those are still poisons, you're not benefiting from despair, but they will slow down his healing and keep that from being a problem if you can stack enough. So, like I said, the goal here is to try and get him down to zero with as many poisons as possible, but we're actually running into a small issue because right there, we probably shouldn't have knocked him down at that moment because the protection purifying the actives kind of removed our progress. And I didn't really think about that. So I should have been sticking more to combos and only knocked him down as I was getting close, but not too close. I probably should have knocked him down for the first time when he was at about 50, maybe 40% health, and I think that would have given me enough poisons to get him over the line and just completely shut down his second life, because now we have to deal with this thing. And Nick on Heavy Hitter, while stun immune, is exactly what we were trying to avoid by bringing Toad. And so that's why I said that Penny would have been better, because you don't really have to worry about timing anything for her method of turning off Nick's second life. She just sees the giant healing and goes, nope. Toad does rely on you having a certain number of those debuffs on the opponent at the right time. So obviously Nick threw an absolute ton of heavies there in a row. That was kind of annoying, but finally he threw the special one, and that was all we needed. One opening fight goes down. Could have been better, but still a very safe option in my opinion. Alright, so now I had another House of X placed on this America Chavez. This one is a shared node, so it wouldn't require you to double the lanes to get that pre-fight, and I really do think it's important. Because if you can't stun America, she is going to throw heavies, and we all know what that does and how annoying it is. So, same basic idea as Spider-Ham, we're still going to try to apply debuffs. They're not going to stick, because we can only do it by knocking her down. But they are going to land those passive power stings, which do stick, 
if we land the debuffs in between the immunity windows, which I'm not doing a great job of right now. And then those are going to help out. But also, the House of X Previte is just allowing us to safely stun her, which means that we can also safely knock her down, and that's really the important thing here, that we're just doing a ton of damage with class advantage, with She-Hulk's dupe helping us out, and she throws a heavy here, like she always does, but it doesn't really matter. We block it to avoid triggering Mystic Dispersion, and there you go. Under a minute fight. She-Hulk is so good. She really does not need to stack even five or six Furies to be good for fights. So remember that if you're thinking, ah, oh, the fight's complicated. I'm not going to be able to stack as many as I guess against Abyss Thing or something. It doesn't matter. If the control she's bringing to a fight is working for you, user. So on that note, here we have Slow. Now, Scorpion has his own evade. This node is foot loose. Very annoying. He also can apply debuffs through block, which is also annoying, but if those do get through, well then as we saw against Spider-Ham, She-Hulk can purify debuffs against science characters. Plus, the kinetic transference would work for us if he were actually throwing specials because we'd be able to hold on to our armor, up, or we'd be able to hold on to our furies and do more damage. But you'll see that Scorpion is not feeling very trigger happy in this fight, and so we end up pushing him to his special two a fair amount. I practiced the special one evade a ton. I knew what I could get away with, how many hits I could block. And that's the big reason that I used the Petrify from Mr. Fantastic to make sure that I didn't have to worry about blocking a few hits of the special one, which is a difficult full dex. See right here, I did end up blocking, I think, two or three of those. But the Petrify kept Kinetic Transference under control, and it just served to push him to the next bar of power. So there we actually do get a refresh on the Furies. You see a couple more ticks of kinetic transference, but kept under control. And you also see that even though we could push to the special two and get a big petrify up, which would help keep his power even more under control, because we have the power sting synergy with Reed, we kind of want him to cross bars, and so I think that would actually work against our purposes, getting the damage boost from the Furies from the special one, pushing him over bars to get the power stings, to get the Fury refreshes when he does decide to throw it, is just working out better for us. We lose a bit to block damage, but down goes Scorpion. Just a really, really solid counter. And as you saw, we barely kept any Furies up. It did not matter. Now, of course, the synergy with Reed is huge to her practicality and war, in my personal opinion. But that fight, the previous fights, were still extremely winnable without it. Like I said, if you're looking for the control Jen has to offer, you don't have to worry about getting her absolute optimal damage. So now we have Reed against Tigra here. Unfortunate, unintentional evade right off the start. You see that we only have two of our pre-fights here instead of all three because I gave uh, one away to somebody else and used one on Scorpion. It doesn't matter. These are the two that help Reed keep things under control. You'll notice that Mystic Dispersion is barely triggering there. I'm very comfortable with the Special 1 Evade, even when it's fully unblockable. This is our first Special, and she's already down to a third. Big chunk from the Power Stinks. Just a really, really easy fight. I could have done this with She-Hulk as well, again, without the Synergy. I only did this with Reed to get myself one more charge on net. Just try and make things a little bit easier in case somebody needed them on Boss Island, basically. So then we move on to Dragon Man. Um, yeah, okay, so I do put one Petrify here. I kind of went back and forth on this, because this is Hard Knock Life, and so it's not the easiest thing in the world to keep that Petrify up, and it can be an, a bad idea if you go about it the wrong way. But basically where I was going with this was that I'm going to bait some heavies, that's going to be fine, and I'm going to parry periodically, knock him down, hold on to the Petrify that way, and otherwise I'm going to be aggressive enough that I can push to my special ones and knock Dragon Man down that way. 
and then that's going to line up well so that you'll see after this special one, where I definitely could have heavy countered and probably should have. I think I was just trying to keep Mystic Dispersion under control. The timing wound up again so that I could safely parry. Because remember, Hard Knock Life does not stop you from parrying. It just provides a temporary consequence. And so if you can spread out those triggers, you're good to go. Again, could have and probably should have heavy countered that special one, but I had my rhythm down. I was going for my heavies and then special ones. Heavies and then special ones, and that was plenty. Power Stings finish him off, but even without the Power Stings, that fight would have been very safe. It just would have taken a little bit longer. And that's actually it, because funnily enough, I've been complaining about all these Mangogs on 54. This alliance placed somebody else there. Um, and so I almost didn't use Reed if I hadn't decided to throw him in for that tiger fight, but very fun war. It's been at least a season and a half, I think, since I was able to bring uh, She-Hulk, and she just crushes, man. I had 30 Sig Stones expiring the other day and decided to throw them into her to increase her Purify chance, uh, her extra damage, all of those little pieces of her Sig which I just think is horribly underrated by a lot of people, and I don't regret it for a second. This was really, really fun uh, to bring her again. So I hope you all enjoyed this one, and until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.